Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. Stand with me and sing Living for Jesus. You may be living for Jesus.
I thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. Thank you, Lord, for our salvation. Not deserve, Lord, Lord, but so rich to give. Amen. And I thank you, Lord, for all you do. Christ, let me pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. 298 is our next song now. I belong to Jesus. Baptist Church. We're glad for those that are watching online as well. Remember to pray for each other if you uh, have a prayer request to get into our church. And we don't hesitate to do that. We, yeah, you say, we're preaching. Our, how many people really care? Well, if one of us cares, that'll make a difference. In one, I'd rather have one person praying for me than nobody. And you're welcome to pray for me anytime that you want. And you say, Lord, I keep praying. George, preacher, I keep praying for you, but God won't do it. And so I don't, I don't know what yours is, but whatever it is, God has his will. Amen. Amen. Be like I told Richard. We sang that song, Richard. I told Richard the other day. I said, I've heard 14 or 15 requests for the song. And I just tell him we're going to sing it anyhow. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. God's good. We have a lot of good things going on. I understand that the things are not normal. They're not normal in school. They're not normal at work. They're not normal at home. You say, well, this is the new normal. No, nope, this is in a mean something, but it's not normal. And God is going to be good. We wait and see. Keep praying that God blesses our country. And uh, I, I know this is not thoughtful of you, but uh, or me, I guess. But we lost a Supreme Court judge this week, and I do not know much about Miss Ginsburg personally, family wise, or anything else. I know she's been on the Supreme Court since I was a kid, and so uh, a long time. And I, I yeah, and so. Uh, she must have some family somewhere. So I, I thought, well, you know, Lord, I don't know who they are. I don't name them. You know what they're going through. You know the situation. So I, I, Otha's brother passed away, and he was the same age, okay? And I'm thinking, okay, I, I don't care. And they were looking for him to go. And I talked to him and said, you know, just because he's that old, 82, and just because you were knowing he's... You still have you'll have the grieving part in there. It's the loss. So you pray for folks in our church family. You pray for folks when God lets you know something like that. Do the same. We have good news from some of our missionaries, and some of them not doing so well, but still we ask for your grace. 
And look at your, uh, we, we don't normally put our itinerary things that are going on out online because they're not here anyhow. Okay, so you got them in the bulletin. Uh, we will do be doing some special things that go along. I'm going to preach to you this morning out of the book of Jude, which is right next to Revelation. You can go ahead and find that and talk to you about something I think is important. God laid it on my heart, and that's the ability to build up your faith. And it's a little different than you think. So you get ready for that. God will bless, and here's something special from our ladies. darkness I stumbled alone far from the sunlight of day then Jesus found me and made me his own he drove my darkness away before shadows I wandered in sin far from the warmth of the light then Jesus found me and changed me within kindled his love in the night now in the sun I follow his word through every trial and test. He is my Savior and he is my Lord. Gladly I give him my Have on your mind. Have you ever thought about your faith 
Come on. Uh, got mine on. Here we go. We're glad to have you this morning at Heritage Baptist Church. Amen. We got it going together. Um, you ever thought about your faith? How many of you think about your faith? You know, I, you ever notice that humans are pretty much the same in every area of their life? If it comes in intelligence, you have some people who have maybe the same IQ as others, but if you talk to three or four different people, one of them will think they're the smartest person in the world. The other one will think they're, they're the dumbest person in the world. And the other one believes that they, you know, that they can't use what their intelligence for anything. You ever notice that, how we are? And that's the way it is with faith. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, we have faith. You say, well, not every man has faith. The Bible says they don't have faith in Christ. We don't, but you have faith in something. If you got married, you have faith that that woman that you married or that man that you married was going to do what it was you expected them to do. If you got married expecting that person to make you happy, you've been disappointed, haven't you? But if you got married because you love the person, you don't want to share your life with them, whatever it was, then you're a pretty happy person, right? And so if you married him because you thought you had money, you're in big trouble right now, I can tell you that. But I will tell you one thing. Sometimes we look for the hardest answers, and, and they're, they're really simple. And this is a simple thing. I uh, was reading my daughter-in-law's post this week. I don't normally read Facebook, so don't send me anything. If you do, send it on a text to me personally, and I might open it, and I might not, okay? But call me on the phone if you need me. I'll answer it if my phone rings. All right. So, but I will tell you this. And she said that she was going to take a uh, sabbatical from ordering on from one of the online ordering places like Amazon or something. And there were people going, why? What's the matter? What did they do wrong? Your daughter. But that was okay. I looked down at a couple of them and they were one, uh, one of the hurt people there that she knows, a friend of hers and Tommy's wrote in and said that, that they answered the door the other day and knock on the door, repeated knock on the door, answered the door. And it was a UPS guy saying, are you guys okay? I haven't delivered anything here in a couple of days now. <laughs> but the best one I read on there was one of the women. Got, ladies, listen to this. I don't, I'm hoping Cheryl didn't read it. All right. It said that her husband's always on to her about ordering things from Amazon. But she, he orders things from Amazon. So what she's learned to do, she just gets stuff and she just puts it in the cart. And he doesn't pay any attention. So when he orders his, she gets hers too. And so I just say, well, you ordered it. You know what I mean? I say, amen. Yeah, cool. You got you to think outside that box sometime. And those of you guys who are not shoppers, and it's a, it's a great thing, I suppose. But in the book of Jude, and that's uh, the little book right before uh, the Revelation, and it's after 3 John. Uh, there's some really cool things in this book. It's too much to cover all in one time, but it's divided up into uh, this the introduction, the occasion, the epistle, why he's doing it. Then he talks about the apostasy and the teachers that are out there. And, but I want you to look down with me in what I call the fourth part of the letter, and that is verse number 20, and we're going to read down through verse 23. It says, But beloved, building up yourselves <clears throat> on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have, have compassion, making a difference. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And that breaks down pretty easy in those four verses. Building up yourselves in your most holy faith. And so you could say with me, building up your faith. And some people are, you know, they'll tell you that faith is, is uh, there's an equal amount given to everybody. I, I don't know if I'm going to say that or not, but it is a lot easier for some people to have faith than it is for others. They ha people have faith. I told you that already. They have faith your car's going to start. They have faith the brakes are going to work. Have you ever driven a vehicle whose you weren't sure the brakes were going to work? Have you, you ever done that? There's nothing more fun, guys, than being in a big truck 
pulling a heavy load and realizing that the weight that you have on the back is way more than the brakes on the truck were made to hold. And I still have dreams about in a truck one time that I pulled up on a hill and it started rolling backwards and didn't make any difference how much I mashed on the pedal, it wouldn't stop it. It just would not do it. So I still have dreams. And in my dreams, it goes on for weeks, you know what I mean, but backwards. And I'm trying, but it didn't then. There's a scary thing. You, you, you don't even think about that. You, you understand that? That everything, and you think with me, I'm, just, I'm not going to scare you or nothing. I'm just telling you that almost every stopping ability in all of your vehicles all depends somewhere on one little O-ring that costs 20 cents. If that went out, Oh, anyhow, don't worry about it, all right? So just go ahead and get out there and drive and go on with it. That's what we're thinking. Or if it's the other guy coming towards you. All right, never mind. We have faith in chairs. You sit down in the pew. You didn't, you didn't expect it to fall on the ground. I have seen them do that. We, I was in church service one time, and they, somebody had taken the middle leg out of a 15-foot-wide pew, and there were four or five People decided to sit on adults and it broke right in the middle because the leg was missing. They weren't expecting that. So I, you have faith in everything. You have faith in, in pretty much, you, you don't think about, you, you lay awake at nighttime thinking that there's going to be you know, air tomorrow or sunshine. See, we, we, we believe that stuff and we believe certain things. Sometimes we went out, sometimes we don't. When we're talking about our faith right now, we're talking about our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And how much faith, how many of you ever said to yourself, I just wish I had more faith. I just wish I had more faith. And uh, I understand that. And he's saying that you, we, we can build up our faith. You understand that we can build up our faith. And you say, well, preacher, I don't, I don't know about that. Can I tell you this? A tried faith is a true faith. Listen to me. A tried faith is a true faith. I have a granddaughter that just got her driver's license yesterday. She found out she could drive up I-45 for the first hour she had a license. 75 miles an hour. Trucks and cars and everything else. Isn't that amazing? She had great faith she could do it. If people in the other cars had known, they probably wouldn't have had the same faith <laughs> she had. Amen. But you know how you learn to drive? How do you learn to drive? You drive. You drive. I, I took a video a couple months ago of one of my other granddaughters, who is 11, and I got the video not saying a word. The truck's backing up toward, I take a picture of the truck, video's going, there's a trailer that it's going to be hooked up to, there's the truck. Didn't say a word. She's not allowed, but Papa says she has to use the mirror. She can't turn around and look. She has to use the mirrors. Backs the truck up, and I watch it the whole way, and she stops about that far from the trailer hitch. Perfect in the center. She opens the door and jumps out, and she's this tall. You say, well, how did she learn to do that? How do y'all think she learned to do that? All of my grandkids and kids, they started driving as soon as I could get them on a mower. I could get them on a little cart as soon as I could put them on a go-kart. We'll put them on a tractor. They've been driving. That's, that's part of their life. How do, you, how do you build up your faith? How is your faith prized? Come on. He said, the trying of your faith worketh patience. That's what James 1, 3 says, the trying of your faith. What's that mean to try your faith? Is it to put it to practice? Okay, it's to use it, right? You say, well, maybe the reason you don't think you have much faith is you had not used it much lately. What do you think? All right, look at this. Habakkuk 2.4, the just shall live by faith. That's also found in the book of Galatians in chapter 2, verse 11. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for grace you're saved by faith. Faith's an important thing. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. First, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. Isn't that strange? It's hard for us to trust God, but we believe we can handle it. Galatians 1, 1 and 2, receive the promise of faith, or Christ through faith. And then again, 1 Peter 1, 5, we're kept by the faith. How? Through the power of God. When you hear somebody say that, building up your faith, are you thinking, mm, 
You must go be preached to somebody else because I already know I can't do it. I just can't do that. Who would ever have enough faith to leave their country, leave their family, gather up their stuff and move off to the middle of Ghana, right? Believing that God was going to use them there. I had a man from Ghana that came by the church this week and I asked him where he's from. He had a real heavy accent. And he said, I'm from Ghana. I said, hey man, I got a lot of missionary friends in that part of Africa. He said, oh, all over. Baptists are everywhere in Africa, winning people to Jesus, left and right. I said, well, amen. At least we know they're doing their job, right? And that's what we're going to do. I want you to look with me. What's the Bible definition of faith? What is the Bible definition of faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And I'm going to stop here. How much is a substance? You know, it's not good when somebody walks in and especially when your grandkids or your husband goes, you know, sweetheart, there's some substance stuck on the top of the counter. How, how big does it have to be to be a substance? Well, what do you think? Does it have to be a gallon? Okay. Can it be just as big around as your finger? Can it be? Yeah. It amazes me. The faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, I want you to understand, when you read your Bible, hope is not wish. Hope is an assured trust. You take faith and trust and put it together. When you have those two, you have hope. It's an assured trust. For by, he said, for we're saved by hope. You say, well, I thought it was faith. It is. It's faith and trust. Do you have faith that I could do that? Well, sure. Do you have trust enough to go with me when I go? Ain't no way. See, right? And I was showing my wife the other day about uh, bear hunting. And a hunter in, uh, in Alaska took a brown bear that was 13 foot tall and almost 1,400 pounds. She was five foot one. Weighed 131 pounds and polished her fingernails before she went out to the hunt. Isn't that cool? You say, well, what is wrong with that woman? Yeah, that's true. I bet you she could do with you if you went with her next time. You know what I mean? I, 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 we can have faith in her because we've seen her do it, right? Okay. See, there's a difference between trust and faith. And what we're worried about a lot of times in our faith is we, we have faith in God. We just don't trust him enough that he can. All right. Look at the second part of it. It's the evidence of things not seen. Got the evidence of it? Yeah. We watch enough CSI to know evidence is important, right? The evidence of it. In your life, there should be some evidence of faith. I don't, I don't care how long you've been saved. You should see constantly the evidence of faith in your life. This is my personal opinion. You ready? I think I can prove it from the scripture. But today I'm going to give it to you as my personal opinion. If you haven't yet persuaded yourself that you're saved, you will not accomplish very much in your whole life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you persuaded? Well, I have faith in my life. How do you know? I have some evidence in it. When I first got saved, and I laugh about it all the time, I would actually ask God, is everything a sin? Is everything a sin? You say, well, God has never convicted me of one single thing. I think you're still lost, okay? Because some of that evidence is God starts working on you. You know what I like about preachers? The ones I like, you know why I like to listen to them? I like to listen to the ones whose preaching changes them. I want, I want to see what their preaching does in their life. If my preaching doesn't affect me, it's not very much preaching. It ought to change me first. Amen? There ought to be some evidence in my life of my faith. 
And with that said, I want you to think, Jesus stated that faith comes in measures. He, he gives us all kinds of measures for faith. And part of you already got your brains going and you know enough Bible to know that he, what he's talking about. How much do you have to have to have this <clears throat> substance? Jesus told his disciples, now watch, they had little faith. But first he told them something else. Mark 40, he said, and he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So none is a measure, right? Nothing in a cup is nothing. It's, it's a measure. There's no substance there, but you got a measure. No faith. In Luke 8, 25, he said to them, where is your faith? You say, well, I packed it in a suitcase and I only bring it out when it gets time to die. I'm afraid there are a lot of Christians just like that. They've got it reserved as an insurance policy. And faith is not an insurance, anything. It is an assurance of what you should have in your life. You ought to see Christ working in you before anybody else notices it in your life. You say, well, I'm looking forward to the day when I'm perfect. So are we. I'm not talking about you either. I'm talking about all of us. But faith, there ought to be some evidence in it. Look what he told the disciples. When he woke Jesus up, he's in the back of the boat. Remember that? He said to them, why are you so fearful? Oh, you have little faith. That's a measure. A little is a measure, right? None's a measure. A little is a measure. In the Sermon on the Mount, he told us, his, those people listening, he said, if God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast out of the oven, how much more shall he clothe you? Oh, you have little faith. So there's a measure. So you, no, measure, no faith is done, but a little is a measure of faith. When you look to the centurion servant, he went to the other extreme. He said, when Jesus heard what he said, and the centurion said, I'm a man under authority, and because I, I, I obey my commander, I have authority to tell people under me what to do. And he asked Jesus to heal his servant, and what he told Jesus, and Jesus understood, is because you're doing what the Father tells you to do, you have the authority to do anything in the world. Jesus said this. He marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him. Point, look at this right here. I say unto you, I've not found so great faith. That was the other extreme from little, right? None is none. That doesn't count. Some is some. Little and great. No, not in Israel. God told us, God only requires just some faith. Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Do you remember how small a grain of mustard seed is? It's a little bitty tiny thing. I see a lot of people get it put in acrylic and wear it around their, around their neck. It's cheaper than diamonds and seems way more spiritual. And for all the things in the whole world, he said, if you had faith as grass a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, remove yonder and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible. I have never understood why anybody wanted to move a real mountain, but he's not talking about it. He's talking in a figurative speech. You could change the world with just a little faith. Jesus told us that God only requires some faith. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith, a grain of a mustard seed, you could say the sycamore tree be plucked up by the root and planted in the seed, and it would obey you. Well, you say, preacher, what are you doing? I understand there's some logic to be put in there. He used the most illogical thing. I don't know anybody that would want to move the mountain. And of course, a few mountains have been moved, literally. I don't know how many sycamore trees have been cast in. It doesn't matter, but I can tell you what he's done. Because of somebody's faith, he's done great things in the world. It doesn't take a great amount. Jesus said, your faith could diminish as well as grow. He said to Simon, Simon, behold, Satan of the desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat. I pray for thee, thy faith shall, not, shall fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Strengthen thy brother. Do you know, how many of you 
don't raise your hand. If you're online, you can. Nobody's there probably watching you. You get tired of fighting the same battles all the time because your biggest battle is you. My biggest battle is me. You say, well, you know, I feel like sometimes I'm going backwards. It's possible in your faith to go backwards. Demoth hath loved this present world. He just left it. It's possible to go backwards. Paul reprimanded the Galatians. He said, This only what I've learned of you, receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun the Spirit and made perfect now by the flesh? Did you have faith in your flesh? Boy, were you disappointed. Our faith is supposed to be in God. Have faith in God. But it comes in measures. Paul told us you could increase your faith. Not boast in things without measure, that's other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased. Isn't that cool? Going back to that same thing now, the trying of your faith. You know when you get strong? When you use the muscles you have. You'll never get stronger. Not doing, not moving. Keep moving. Keep believing. God hasn't lied. You believe in God, believe also in me, is what Jesus told us. But having hope when your faith is increased, and we shall be enlarged by you according to your our role abundantly. I want you to look with me. Three, three pretty much simple things. When Paul was in Lystra, he was having a hard time getting everybody to listen to him. And he was there at a gathering place, which was his common out way to do around somewhere around a synagogue or public area. And it said, a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked, and he's there begging for alms. Somebody's brought him there and laid him down. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, perceived that he had faith to be healed. Now, there's a hard statement that Paul could tell he had enough faith to be healed. Well, remember what Jesus did in the temple on the Sabbath day? And he said, is it right? to do good on the Sabbath day or not. And they looking at him because he was looking at a man who had a scribbled up arm. And he said, stick out your arm. Now, I want you to understand something. Jesus, the man, and everybody there that was waiting to see what they could hate him for, knew he could heal the arm and that he was willing to heal the arm. The only two obstacles to that were those people who were telling him that he could not do it and that's as old as the devil himself. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You're not worth anything. You can't accomplish. You can't serve God. I, I don't serve God by my ability. I serve God because of faith. But the big decision was the man's. The big de decision was the man's. Hold out your arm. Because if the man would have said, mm -mm, he would have died with a shriveled up arm. Might have been 30 years later. But first, he had to put some of his faith in the Lord's ability. And that faith could be intimidated by all those guys. I guarantee you the same ones that ran Jesus out of the temple, I mean, out of the synagogue, they were, that man never got to come back. You knew he was out. 
but he held out his arm. See, that's an act of faith. Faith overcomes all those opposing obstacles and all those opposing opinions. And guess what? The first thing he had in his life was evidence. Move his hand. Three simple things. Start with nothing. I know there's lives and people who have no faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And I tell you, it doesn't make any difference what you believe in if you don't believe in God. And the only answer to every question about God and Him in our lives and what He wants is found in the Word of God. I'm very appreciative of men and women in the past. And I have great respect for some of the great fathers of Christianity. My faith is not in them. My faith is in the Word of God because my faith is in God. Just a little bit. If I'd had to know where Genesis was the day I got saved, I would have walked out of the building lost. But the Word of God said, if I call on the Lord and I believe that He would do it, just like that crippled man, I stuck my arm out, I stuck my life out, and guess what? God saved me. And the first one to know it was me. Immediately started working on me. He changed the whole world around for me, guys. I ain't going into it, but He changed the whole world around I got to do something I was never supposed to ever be able to do. I got to stay at home in my hometown to be able to come and go back to that church until I knew enough to know why I believed I was saved. It took a whole miracle of God to do that. Bigger than you'd ever see. Start with nothing and go to something. And many more believed because of his own words. You know why they believed? Some woman at the well said, he's told me everything I've ever done. He's a prophet. They went out, listened to him preach. And they said unto the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. That's what we're talking about. There was a time when none of us had faith. In time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We all had our conversations in time past and the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were nature, by nature the children of wrath even of others. But when God, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love he loved us, when we were dead in sin, uh, sins, quickened us together in Christ, for by grace are ye saved. Now he's quoting himself in chapter number two of the book of Ephesians in verse eight down, for by grace you're saved through faith. That's not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Okay, take what's happened. There's a time you didn't have faith. Some faith is better than no faith. Amen? No, it's faith you got. Some faith's better than no faith. You say, what? How do, how do I mean? Well, my granddaughter, the youngest one, is we had a faith experience in our life. Her older sister got a lizard and she wanted a lizard. She's scared of everything that breathes, moves, crawls, barks, meows, or does anything else, okay? It doesn't have to be much. It could be a giant guard dog or a little tiny worm, doesn't matter. But she wanted a lizard. And I, she said, you know, Papa, if I, I said, listen to me, the only way you're going to get a lizard is you have to pray and ask God for a tank to put it in. Well, can I? I said, nope, can't tell nobody. You just have to pray. And if God's in it, you'll get a tank. Well, sure enough, a week or so went by and somebody said, hey, you know anybody that wants a fish tank? She's coming, it works, my boy, it works, it works. I got a fish tank. Isn't that amazing? How much faith does it take? with a six-year-old or a seven-year-old. You say, well, God didn't do that. That's because you don't have any faith. 
Hmm? You wouldn't pray for a fish tank. She did. I heard her tell one of her sisters the other day, so if you, instead of trying to get it from suffering, why don't you just pray and ask God? He'll do it. Amen. Jesus lived in a faithless generation. That's, that was their problem. He said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? There's, there's a question. And it's better to have some faith than no faith. Like Thomas. Now watch what he said. Thomas said, I'm not going to believe until I can put my hand in his side and thrust, put my finger in the hole in his hand. And Jesus shows up and he said, Thomas, reach here that thy finger, behold my hands, reach thither my hand, thrust in my side. Be not faithless, but believing, but believing. Any kind of faith. I don't care how God has to prove it to you guys. Any kind of faith. You say, well, I, I don't want to challenge God. Can I tell you someone, you know the easiest way to challenge God, you're not going to like it but I'll tell it to you. Prove him with the simplest, easiest measure you got. And you can go back to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10 and find the verse for it. Do it with your money. You start tithing and giving to God and watch and see if he doesn't give back. Paul said, the Lord told him, it's better to give than to receive, and he's never going to let me be better than him. You say, well, I don't want to give any money to this church. Then give it to some other church. Be faithful in your time. Put your money in there. Take care of it. Share what you got. Cast your bread on the water. See if it doesn't come back. That, that can't be too hard, can it? You don't even have to put any sweat in that. Prove me. Prove me here. Now with saith the Lord of hosts. That's what he said in Malachi. Secondly, once you have faith, do something with it. Most of the faith I see in people's lives, they got faith in God and it's starved to death and has no muscle ability or anything because they're not working any part of it. It's not being practiced. It's just dwindling away. Like laying in the bed and wait for the muscles to atrophy. Put it to work. Do something with it. Put some faith into it. Make a difference somehow, some way in somebody's life. Mostly your own. He said, where to shall we lock in the kingdom of God? What comparison have we? It's a grain of mustard seed which is sown in the earth. Back to that mustard seed. Three times Jesus used that example. It's less than all the seeds. When it has grown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow. Somebody somewhere won the person that won me to the Lord Somebody won that one, and somebody won that one, and somebody won that one, and I promise you, you don't know their names, and they may not even know they've done it. But because they practice their faith, I'm here. Just a little bit of faith. You say, well, you know, I've only ever won one. You, you know, when you talk about great men of the past, I don't know if any of us know the guy that won D.L. Moody to the Lord. We know what he did and what he was, but... Who won them? Who won them? How much do you hear about Charles Spurgeon's mama? But her faith did a lot, didn't it? Never got to be known, never was famous anyplace else that I know of. Once you have some faith, do something with it. Don't let your Christian faith become so unused. And it dies. Every once in a while, there, step out and do something. Really worldly done, okay? I made a deal with God one time. You see, God don't make deals. It does when you, you're, you're wanting to do something. I, I made a deal with God. I own my own business. I got paid myself. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, listen to me. Every time I get anything out of the normal, overtime stuff this year, if you give it to me, I'll give to missions. I only ever did that one year because he liked to work me to death. I promise you he did. He said, well, I don't want to do that. I want to work for it and keep it. But see, that doesn't increase your faith. Can I tell you, God will do it. 
I hear people all the time saying, well, look at that. I went to Hawaii one time. A friend of mine said, I went to Hawaii and got off the plane and stepped outside the airport and there was a wallet laying on the ground and I opened it up. There wasn't anything in it but seven $100 bills. <laughs> I found a $5 bill one time. I was in Walmart. I thought, ha, 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 ha. And turned the corner and there was a little girl crying. I said, what's the matter? And she goes, I lost my $5 bill. Tough, ain't it? Big world out there. You know? <laughs> I gave it back to her. But I did do one thing one time. And I'm going will God do it for you? I don't know. Maybe he just puts up with me. But I'm always saying, Lord, if you will, I'll do. And I've tried to keep my part of it every time. I was in a Walmart. I mean, a Walmart. Sam's, when it was, used to be out here on I-20. Gone now. I was standing in the parking lot. It's one of them March days where the wind blows every direction all at once in Texas. And I was looking at, I wanted to do something for one of our missionaries. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if you give me a hundred bucks, I'll give it to that missionary. And I promise you guys, out of nowhere, a hundred dollar bill blew and wrapped around my leg. This is the guy who's never found any money. Okay, wrapped around my leg. That's what I did with it. I gave it to missions. He said, would well, God bless you? He didn't have to. It wasn't my money anyhow. But it's a blessing to know that God, you say, well, God, that's like nothing. You, you want to bet? You want to tell? I got about a million of those guys in my lifetime. Do something with the faith you got. Quit complaining about what you can't do and do something with what you got. Oh, if I could only serve God somehow. Somebody could come up to the church, watch the windows. Oh, I wish there was something I could do for God. There's, you can always work. Oh, I wish there was something I could do for God. You know, besides that, besides that, and besides that. I mean, I want to put my faith to work. Get you some tracks and pass them out. Oh, I mean, I wish there was something I could do. And, Amen? Do something with what you got. Help somebody around you. Help somebody around you. This is a long portion of Scripture. But I want you to look at the first couple of verses. Jesus is coming down from the mountain from praying. He's talking. And there's a young man there who is demon-possessed, and everybody's trying to cast the demon out of him or heal him or whatever they were doing. And his, the dad tells him the story. He cast himself into the fire and he tries to get and it brought him here and your disciples can't do anything and the Jews can't do anything and all and look what he says. He said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I it'd be I guarantee you you're going to get what you want. The Lord will trust you. And he, Jesus raised him up and put him back. Help somebody around you. Help somebody. Encourage their unbelief to become faith. Do your part. Are they struggling? Maybe you're the person to help them because you're struggling and you know exactly what they're going through. After somewhere, Today, we've been praying for a family for quite a while. And just this last week, the mom eventually died and left behind three little kids. I've lost a kid. Part of you guys have lost children. But I can't imagine the difference it makes to to lose your mom when you're just a little girl or a little boy. I, I never lost my mom. She lived to be an older lady. She lived long enough we got to be friends. <laughs> Amen? But I can't imagine what those guys are going through right now. Not just the dad. You say, I don't even know them, guys. We just got their list on there. So what do you do? I'm practicing my faith. And I'm saying, Lord, 
Be merciful to those guys. Help them. Help them. Somehow, you intervene. Make yourself known to them. They're Christian people. Exercise your faith by sharing it with those people around you. Number two, thirdly, here's the last thing. Strengthen your faith. James said, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead. Oh, another measure of faith. It's dead faith. Dormant. Unused. Kept there for some reason. Faith that works is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without my works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. I promise you, you can't work your way to heaven. But I promise you, if you're on your way to heaven and you really enjoy the travel and you have faith in God, you will be doing something for God. You say, preacher, you know, and don't start explaining it away now. Do you have faith in God? Just a little tiny, tiny bit. See, remember, just a little bit. And build it up. Use it. Put it to work. Do something with it. Share it with people. Not just the preaching hour. Get right with God. But the faith that you have. You know what? God can help you. You know what? I don't know if you know what it's like. and You never will unless you're a pastor. I took the first church I had. Got there on Saturday. Preached on Sunday. Monday morning. Early, early in the morning. I got a phone call from one of my members. Whoever they were. <clears throat> And they said, Pastor, our eight-month-old baby just died. Can you come over here? And I had a, a 19, that was a 70 model Thunderbird, and it was brown. And I got into the thing and sat in the seat, got my maps go out, trying to find where... Shackleford Street was. I still remember. And I said to God, preachers are supposed to know what to tell people. Looks to me like you got about 10 minutes to teach me something. Because I don't know. There's no magic words. But there is the comfort of reminding them that just like my baby, their baby was with Jesus. And just like my baby, I didn't have to worry about where they were and I know where they would be when I got there. And I shared with them all those things. I can't take away that hot sorrow and that hurt but I could remind them that the same God that comforted me could comfort them. And that's what I'm talking about, sharing your faith. I don't want to know so much about one some great evangelist told you one time in a story you heard on. I want to know what has God done for you? What has he done for you? When you share that, that's an example of the greatest amount of faith. Believing that God could not just do it for me, He'd do it for anybody. And if you're here or you're watching online, I'm telling you, the Apostle Paul meant that when he said that Jesus Christ is coming to the world to save sinners 
And he said, of whom I am chief. If he could do it for me, that's what he's telling you. If he could save me, he can save you. And I'm telling you, that's the power of faith in our life. When we know, and it has evidence in our life, it doesn't stay dormant. It grows. And pretty soon, you'll be able to face some things you could never think you'd face before. Because God will honor your faith. Build up your faith in Christ. Let's pray to you. Father, what a privilege it is to know that we can trust you. Trust your promises. Trust your word. And Lord, there's times you can't trust us. But Lord, there's never a time we can't trust you. Lord, I pray that you would take that faith, that little tiny piece of faith, and Lord, that you would help us to increase it to the point that we'd be able to accomplish something in the world with it. For souls to be saved, for lives to be changed, for differences to be made, and that eternity be affected. Not, not because what we possess, but because of the faith we have in you and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me just a minute. A bit. Brother Bob Lemus, would you dismiss us, please, with a word of prayer? Our Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your grace, your love, and your mercy, Lord. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you increase our faith, Lord. Help us, Lord, to stand up and step out by faith, Lord, and trust you, Lord, and just see what you can do, Lord, and have that experience, Lord, that we can share with others, Lord. And Lord, help us, Lord, to um, have the heart and the, and the love that we should have for each other, Lord, and help us, Lord, to show it, Lord. And Lord, I love you, and I pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.